South Africans are living in dense coastal settlements, expanding cities into delicate coastal estuaries, mining next to marine protected areas, and polluting stretches of the country's 3,000 km of coast. At the same time, climate change is impacting our coastal areas through sea level rise, increased storms and wind, resulting in more severe flooding and erosion. This has necessitated government to invest in integrated coastal management, which integrates human land use, the natural environment and climate change. Assessing the South African coastline to identify where climate change impact will hit worst was the next requirement, and this is where the skills of the country's researchers come in. The CSIR, together with Stellenbosch University and um, Nelson Mandela University conducted the National Coastal Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment for the whole coast of South Africa. So this project actually combines a multitude of disciplines, coastal management, coastal engineering, and also GIS and numerical modeling in order to um, develop geospatial layers on where uh, the coast is likely to be affected by flooding due to storm and to sea level rise and also to storm related erosion and to sea level rise coastal retreat. For the first time ever we assessed the whole of the South African coast in a methodologically homogeneous way. So which means the results that we produced for the Northern Cape are now comparable to the results in KwaZulu-Natal, for instance. The results enable government to now identify risk hotspots on a national level for storm-related flooding and erosion, as well as sea level rise-related coastal retreat. However, these three risk layers, which are kind of a color-coded system from green, low risk over yellow, moderate risk to red, very high risk, is only one layer. It really becomes powerful if you connect it with other spatial data. So the next step that needs to be done is actually to see where do we have high risk, let's say, flood areas and identify do we have buildings in these areas? Or do we have other infrastructure? Do we have, let's say, nuclear plants in these areas? This will then enable the government actually to take action specifically. Because if there is flood risk in a completely natural area, there might actually no, be no need to intervene. Flooding in itself is actually part of a natural coastal system. So what was interesting to us was the actual mapping of the whole coast, gathering all the data and having it located in one spot, because data is distributed among so many organizations, little bits and pieces, where this project really allowed us to gather all of it and look at it in its entirety and mapping it it was really nice having a visual representation of the data and seeing what state the coast is actually in. A lot of it was surprising where we thought the coast wasn't that great, but the data showed us that it was actually fine, where in other areas we thought that the coast is completely fine and actually needs a bit of attention. Another really nice takeaway from the whole project was the tool that was developed. It's an offline tool which allows municipalities and government to map the coast with the data that we have so they can pull the data that they need as they need it. Look Fogel says capacity building for the decision makers is very much a part of the project. The researchers have held workshops with officials at district level to interrogate the data specific to the district and to provide examples of how to use the data. Perhaps nobody understands the urgency of pinpointing coastal vulnerabilities and responding appropriately better than Dr. Andre Taron from Stellenbosch University and a coastal resident of the Strand area. So this is the Strand coastline, part of the uh, city of Cape Town and a very built up area and why the Strand is a particularly vulnerable area in terms of future sea level rise 
is because it's at a very low elevation above sea level. So in fact, um, just uh, two blocks in from, from the shoreline, it's actually even lower than right here where we're standing now. So once the shoreline experiences a major event, a storm coupled with a high tide and an onshore wind and over time increasing seawater levels, then we will have more and more overtopping of the coastal road as already happens here frequently. This is why there's a new seawall here because it was overtopping into this parking area here where we are. So this part is now protected but there's other parts that aren't. And of course it's very expensive this, to, to build structures like this. Tehran says that even rich countries are coming to the conclusion that it won't be affordable in the long term and over large areas to defend all built infrastructure against the rising sea. Retreat from the coastal areas that are at risk is becoming a more and more popular response to the challenge globally. Here too, the results and information from a tool such as the National Coastal Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment will help government decide which infrastructure to protect and how. Thank you.